Good evening and welcome. My name is Paul Grogan. Tonight, I say tonight, it's tonight in the UK. I don't know where it is where you are. Uh, I'm going to be doing a tutorial and solo playthrough of Kingdom Rush from Lucky Duck Games. This is a sponsored video. Um, Lucky Duck Games have, have sponsored this video for me to bring you, uh, yeah, instructional video on the solo game. This would have been a multiplayer playthrough, unfortunately, due to coronavirus and lockdown restrictions, I'm not allowed to have anybody around the house. So it is going to be a solo playthrough tonight. But right after this, I'm going to be playing for probably, well, between two and three hours. And then right after this, uh, Stella and Tarrant from Meeple University are going to be live streaming, uh, doing a two player playthrough as well. So uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing the solo game today. Uh, uh, now, and then they're going to be doing the, the two player game afterwards on their channel. So that's Meeple University. Right, thank you very much for the people in the chat. And uh, yeah, Mark said that there's a countrywide blackout where he is. So I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad the power is back. Uh, right, so Kingdom Rush is a game that was on Kickstarter. Uh, it is being delivered to backers, I believe soon, and it's gonna be available at retail soonish as well. Um, if Lucky Duck Games happen to be in the chat, please let me know uh, when it is going to be available. I'm sure you probably did and I've probably forgotten so <laughs> apologies for that. Um, what is this game about? Essentially this is a board game version of a very popular tower defense app game. Now I, I don't generally play tower defense app games. Uh, they're not generally my thing but having played the board game I then got the app and started playing around with it and it's actually quite good. Now the board game is not what you might expect from the uh, cartoony style artwork. It is actually uh, a very tactical, very clever little puzzle game that you're trying to basically solve. There is variability as well, so it isn't, a, it isn't like a puzzle that once you've solved it, you can't play it anymore. Uh, and we're going to be starting with scenario one. The game actually comes with a campaign map, which I've put safe where, where I've put it. Here we go. So the game comes with this campaign map, right? And you play in a series of chapters. Now the base game is, I believe scenarios one to 10, which is this part. Uh, and what it does is if you play through the scenarios in order, it is a campaign, it kind of tells a story, but also it, it uh, doesn't use all of the rules right at the start. So we're gonna be playing scenario one today, which is the basic introductory game. Uh, it isn't including all of the rules. Then we're gonna move on to scenario two. And then depending on the time, I might do scenario three today as well. Now you may notice scenario one, there is a little star here. That is because on Thursday, when I was playing through this game to uh, learn how to play, I actually completed this scenario on the basic difficulty level. So I got to put one star, you get a sheet of stickers. There you go, you get a sheet of stickers. There's other sheets of stickers as well, but I took one of the stars off there. And I've put it on here and I have completed this scenario on difficulty level one. Just purely optional extra. It isn't really like a legacy game or anything. Uh, and you can replay it again. It's just you use this to track your uh, performance. We're going to be playing through scenario one today, but I'm going to be playing on the two star difficulty. Although there's only three stars here, there's actually five difficulty settings because there's one star, two star, three star, but then there's another one, heroic, and then there's another one which is called iron something or other. Um, and then there's other stickers that you can stick on if you manage to cl complete them on, on those settings. Anyway, we're going to be playing through scenario one. I'm going to be teaching you the rules as we play. Um, and I'm also going to be pointing out uh, what is different for the multiplayer game. We're going to be playing solo today, but some of the rules we're going to be using today are specifically for the solo game, and you won't use them in a multiplayer game. So the first thing is there are four heroes included in the game. There's actually five, but we'll come on to the fifth one later on. Okay, and you choose one of the heroes to play. You have Ignis, who's like this flamey one. The figures don't come painted. I painted this one quickly on Friday. Uh, you've got Illyria Swiftwind, who has a cat. You've got Malik Hammer Fury, and you have Magnus Spellbane. Now, it does recommend, if you're playing solo, to use one of the melee characters, which is what I've done. You don't have to. It's just, if you're learning how to play the game, it does recommend using either Ignis or uh, Malik as, as the hero. But in the solo game, the other heroes are actually on the bench which is why i've got the figures here and the reason why this one looks a bit odd is this one's been undercoated okay so i haven't finished painting this one yet and what i can do is i can actually call in help from the other characters once each during the game now you can't do that in a multiplayer game so you won't see that uh, in meeple university's uh, playthrough later on but you are going to see it today 
Right, let's go to scenario one. I haven't done all of the setup, and the reason I haven't done all of the setup is I didn't want you to come away the, with the impression that it was the same setup each time, okay? Because you might think, oh, well, Paul's just solved this scenario. There's no point playing that one again. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to tell you which bits of the scenario setup were fixed and which ones are variable. So scenario one, I'll read the introduction. <clears throat> are we all sitting comfortably? Strange portals have begun to appear throughout the kingdom. From them, foes we defended the kingdom from against in the past are arriving at our borders. These old enemies have rallied the local goblin tribes to once again attack the kingdom. They are joined by creatures that we have never seen before! Exclamation mark. You must squash this threat and close those portals before we are once again at war. Okay, so the map setup is fixed for this scenario. It is this here, okay? We have spawn points one and two. They're both in the same place, but what that means is two more hordes are gonna spawn uh, at the end of each round. Um, we do that, we do that. And then based on the number of players in the game, you set up these building sites, okay? So for a solo game, we have uh, the yellow building sites there, 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 and there, the green ones there, 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 and there, and the purple ones there, there, and there, okay? Then what we do is we put, um, three level zero or wave zero green hordes on these spaces here now whenever you put any hordes on the board of a particular um wave and there are more included in the game you shuffle them okay so we're going to shuffle the five wave zero keep calling them level they're wave wave zero ones and we're going to put one in there we're going to put one in there and we're going to put one in there, okay? So there are slight differences depending on which ones we use. Those go out of the game. And they are all oriented so that the purple bar is always pointing towards this. This is the exit. What's going to happen is these hordes are going to be moving along this path off here. If they move off, then they're going to deal me damage. I have eight health because I'm playing on difficulty level two. Um, and they're going to deal damage one for each enemy. So this is one, two, three, four, five. This is a big enemy. This will deal four damage to me if that moves off. So if I don't do anything with this on round one, I lose the game. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to try and do something like that. Now we need to make a stack here and that is fixed for the scenario you see here. But it's fixed in terms of what cards there are, but actually we make it ourselves. So again, I didn't want to do this ahead of time. I wanted to do it so that you see the variability. We need three of these... Uh, yellowy orangey brown ones okay so we need three of those at the top then we need the first portal so first portal from uh, the first scenario portal number one goes there then we get a red one again red from wave one so these are more difficult opponents that goes there then we get another yellowy orangey brown one then another red one then portal two and then two red ones okay so those cards will go there. They are going to spawn. Can I move them down a bit? Yeah, they're going to spawn and they're going to come along this road. And remember, there are two spawn tokens. So we're going to get two cards around. Heroes, I've chosen my hero. And for the starting scenario, you don't have any special abilities. You set your health to the maximum. Uh, you have a hero card, which you play from your hand onto here if you want to activate your hero. There is the miniature that starts off off the board. And then we have these towers here so i'm just going to zoom in on these towers four different types of towers and at the moment there are three levels of tower there is a level four tower included in the game but we don't use them in this scenario so i've left them off for now and you start with whatever it says on here i say here i'm pointing to a bit you can't see here so for playing ignis starting towers in solo i start with an adept an archer, an artillery, and a militia. Okay, so that's what I start with. They go into my hand along with this card. And then depending on the particular scenario, you will start with um, a certain amount of crystals. So I start with eight crystals. I don't start with any spells and I don't start with any special abilities. Okay, that's what I normally start with for a solo game. However, I'm playing on Two star difficulty, okay? So two star difficulty means that I have eight health, which is here. 
I would have had 12 if I was playing on one star difficulty. And I get a setup bonus of a crystal and a spell. Now we're not playing with spells in scenario one. So it's just a crystal, which is why I start with nine crystals. Now, interestingly enough, if you look at how many crystals you start with in a two player game, it's three. Okay, so in a solo game, you start with a lot more crystals than you normally would. Right, that is the setup done. I'm now going to explain how the game plays. Oh, this, by the way, uh, this is a little miniature cake that Vicky made uh, yesterday. This is my reward if we succeed in this scenario. Okay, so there you go. The game does not come with this, unfortunately. Um, that is a very special limited edition, Paul only. Right, okay. So the way that it works is you have a turn sequence which is actually printed on the player board here, and you follow this turn sequence every round of the game. The objective, unless the scenario says otherwise, is to defeat both of the portal ca uh, horde cards and survive till the end of that round. So you don't need to kill everything. You just need to kill both of the portal tile, uh, both of the portal cards and then survive until the end of that round. And if you do, you win the scenario. We lose the scenario if we ever take, uh, if we ever lose all of our health here, or if one of the portal cards gets off the board, okay? So if one of the portal cards escapes off the exit, lose the game immediately. So there is a turn sequence. There are six phases in each turn. You do not do phase one in the first turn of the game, which is to spawn new hordes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight into phase two and I'll explain how it works. We play tower and hero cards. OK, I'm going to very quickly explain how multiplayer works and then I'm going to explain how the solo works. So in a multiplayer game, each player would have a color and they would have one of these uh, tiles in front of them to indicate what color they are. And they are only allowed to play towers from their hand on their building sites. OK. So if I was the purple player in a multiplayer game, I would only be able to play towers here, here, or here. In the solo game, what I have to do is, and I'm using these, the game doesn't say to do this, but I found this useful. Each round, I have to choose one color that I cannot play on that round, okay? And each round, I need to choose a different color. I cannot choose the same color on two rounds consecutively. So for example, in round one, I could say, I'm not gonna play on purple and I'm going to remove this purple counter, so I could only play on green and yellow, uh, yellow, green and yellow. The next round, I get the purple one back, and I now have to play on purple and either green or yellow. So that's for the solo game. So what we're going to do is I'm now going to do this, and I'm going to play my tower cards onto these spaces here. Now remember, I did say if this moves off, I lose the game immediately. So I want to either try and destroy this tile, ideally, or slow it down, because you can slow things down from moving. Um, right, so let's have a look at what cards I've got. And remember, I'm going to activate my hero at some point as well. And I think I might activate my hero first. Because of my hero's basic attack. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to activate my hero. So I'm going to play that card there to activate my hero. Now, my hero has three movement points. Heroes have, some of them are slower, but this one has three movement points. Uh, and it comes on on the exit, and I can basically move it around the board. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it through this one and onto here. Now, these heroes are on big square bases, and they are exactly the size of a two by two creature. Okay, so what happens is I can put this wherever I want to. And I'm actually going to put it here. OK, so Ignis goes on there and that is the that is this big creature here that is that dealt with. Right. Now, in addition to that, Ignis has a basic attack, which I can do now. OK, now what you can't see off camera is I have lots of trays full of lots of different uh, pieces which will tessellate together to cover up all of these here. So Ignis's basic attack, Ignis's basic attack is a three by one thing, which is here. OK. And it has that icon on, which means I can rotate this, flip it however I want to. OK, it's a melee attack, which means I can only use it on the tile that he's on. And it has an ability that if it covers exactly two enemies, I get a bonus. So that's what I'm going to do. I am going to put it so that it goes here like this. OK, and then if it covers exactly two enemies, which it does, I can place a little one by one damage on each adjacent horde. And adjacent in this game counts diagonal. 
So this is going to go on there, and this is going to go on there. Okay. Again, what you're trying to do is you're trying to cover up all of these. If you cover up all of the enemies, you, you can ignore the blank spaces. If you cover up all of the enemies, then the horde is dead and it disappears. Right, so that is my hero activated. I moved, I've done my basic attack. Okay, and again, if this was multiplayer, you'd all be activating your heroes and moving around the board and coordinating your efforts. If I didn't mention, this is a cooperative game. Sorry, I did forget to mention that. Right. I have these other cards, and this is where the clever part in the game comes in, because you play your cards, and you put them on one of your building sites, and you orient it however you want to, and it does a particular thing. No randomness in this game, it's all tactical and planning. And then at the end of the round, you will get that card back into your hand. So if you play it, it does its thing, and you get it back into your hand. However, you can upgrade cards, but to upgrade cards, you need to basically not play them for a turn. Okay, what you do is you give your card to another player. It is upgraded in the process of giving it to them, but it goes face down into their incoming tower section and then they get it next round upgraded. Okay, so you've got to make this decision about, oh, well, I, I want to play this card, but if I don't play it, I get to upgrade it. Okay, so you don't buy the upgrades with money or anything like that. You literally just have to wait around uh, to buy it. Uh, hello to everybody in the chat. Paul's here, David's here, Thomas is here, Kyle's here, uh, Marcel's here. Hi, Marcel. Uh, Michael's here as well. Thank you very much for joining me. Right. Now, because this was, this was a variable setup <laughs> and I didn't know it ahead of time, I'm just going to need a minute to look at my cards. But what I'll do is I'll try and explain what it is that I'm doing. Can we zoom in on this bit? Yes, we can. Right. So the cards have on them arrows, which indicate the directions in which they can attack and the shape and size of piece that will go on the board. So the, uh, the Adepts, for example, if I was to put it uh, here, okay, then the arrows mean that this could actually target either this, this, or this, okay? And the piece that it's attacking with is this, but it has to go in exactly that, it can't be flipped over, it has to go exactly like that, and it cannot be rotated, okay? Now, some of them, can be rotated. For example, if you see, if it was uh, a wizard instead, you see that little icon there with the spinny arrows, that means you can flip it and you can rotate it. Oh, Nick and Gemma are here too. Hi, Nick and Gemma and Paul. Another Paul's here, excellent. Um, so yeah, so that's the adept. I could do that and I could put that on here, here or there. And all of the different ones do different things. So yeah, I'm just gonna need a minute to have a look at my cards. And remember, I've got to choose one of these colors where I cannot play this turn. Um, and I think we want to do a little bit of destroying things. So yeah, let's do this. I'm gonna play, I might play first and then decide which color I don't want to use this turn. I'm going to put the artillery there. Okay, now the artillery has multiple effects. So what it does is it puts one of these pieces, and again, cannot rotate it. It's got to go exactly like that at range one. So I'm going to put that there. And then it does a little one by one at an angle this way and another one that way. So this is going to go there like that. So that's the artillery play. So I've played on yellow. Still haven't decided which other color I'm not using. I think I'm going to play on um, and again I don't have to use these. I'm going to play on purple as well. No, hang on a minute, I need, that needs to go there. Right, yes, I'm going to play on purple. That's going to go there and this is militia, so militia are different. Um, Oh, uh, Stella's just joined you from Meeple University. Hello, Stella. I gave you a big shout out at the start. So yeah, you're on right after me, assuming I finish in three hours, which I will do. So these, these cards generate soldiers, okay? Soldiers work in a slightly different way. You don't use cardboard tiles. You actually use little soldier meeples. Uh, and these will go out. They will cover up a space. But if you don't manage to cover up all of the spaces, which would destroy the actual horde, then the soldier is removed. 
So it's kind of temporary damage, but also if there is a soldier or a hero on a tile, that tile will not move. Okay, so if, for example, I didn't put the soldier there, then this tile isn't completely destroyed, but it doesn't move because the hero is basically keeping it busy. But what I want to do is I want to destroy it. So that's going to go on there. That is that militia played. There is another special rule about these um, soldier cards as well, the militia, the footmen and the knights, is that you can play another tower on top of them in the same round. OK, now you can't do that with anything else, but you can do with these. So if I wanted to, I could actually put something else on top of there now. Which. Oh, do I actually want to do that? I think I might. Oh, but then I'm not upgrading. Yeah, OK, so I'm playing on purple and yellow this turn. So green is the color that I'm not actually using for this turn. So I can't play on green. Uh, right, OK, I don't really want to play all of these cards, but also look at this amount of damage that I'm going to take. <laughs> That's a lot of damage. Um, now, I think the way that these work, I think these big monsters here, and I will just check this in the rules, but I think that unless you cover up all of their spaces, they deal you four damage. If anybody in the chat knows, let me know, but I think I read that earlier. Uh, big enemies. Where are big enemies? It might be in the scenario book. Yeah, if a horde with a big enemy reaches the kingdom, uh, the kingdom loses four hearts if at least one part of the big enemy is not covered. So you have to cover it all up, otherwise it's going to deal you four damage. So this is a little risky. This is very, very risky. I might let this one through and I'll take seven damage. That means I'm then on one health for the rest of the game, <laughs> which is a little silly, I think. But I think that's what I'm going to do. OK, it's a bit risky but this is what we're going to do. So I'm not going to play these two cards. So what happens is I upgrade the archer into a marksman and I put it there and then I upgrade the adept into a wizard and I put that there. OK. And then we go to phase three. We destroy the horde trays. Any horde tray which is completely covered, uh, all of the enemies are covered, it is destroyed. But any hero that's on a destroyed tray takes a damage. If you ever go down to zero health, uh, your hero has to get regenerated and you basically lose a turn. OK, um, this horde is defeated. This stays on the space. Now, when you defeat a horde, you flip it over and on the back is a reward. So that's one crystal. You can have a maximum of 12 crystals. There is only 12 included in the game. Uh, this isn't destroyed. This isn't destroyed. Then what we do is we advance horde trays. OK, so every horde tray starting with this one will move one space. So this one moves one space and I take seven damage. OK, we'll find out whether this was the right thing to do or not. It now seems a little crazy to do that, but I've done it. That's all right. And then this moves one. OK, and then what we do is we pick up tower and hero cards. So our tower cards that we played, they come back into hand along with the upgraded ones, which remember, if this was a multiplayer game, these are ones that we would have received uh for another player if the hero is used on the last tile won't it prevent the last two tiles from moving says thomas if the hero is used on the last tile what no so tiles will move through each other uh so if i'd have prevented this one from moving which i could have done uh then this one would have just moved past it and you're going to see that almost at the start of the next round so now we spend crystals okay so you can spend your crystals on buying new towers Oh, I need to zoom out, don't I? Um, any level one tower that you buy costs two crystals and any level two tower you buy costs three crystals. So I am actually going to spend nine crystals. OK, and I'm going to buy um, a footman. I'm going to buy another adept. And I'm going to buy a marksman. OK, so now I have loads of cards in my hand. Right. That is the end of the first round. Now we go to round two. And at this point, we spawn new hordes. So first of all, spawn point one is here. So we take the top card from here 
and we spawn it into here. Now, these with the arrows on, these are fast enemies. This is going to move two spaces in the movement phase as long as any of these are still visible. Okay. Now, the second one, where does this spawn? It actually jumps forward to here. Okay. So you've got to be very, very careful. This one has suddenly arrived and it's here. Okay. Now, my hero, I believe, moves off to an adjacent site. Um, and now we're in big trouble. It is, <laughs> it is phase two. Yeah, big spender. The crystals, what the crystals are for, are for buying towers. Okay, so that's what you want to need. That's what you want to do. So we've got one health left. Yeah, this is going to move two spaces and it's going to kill me. Now, I can prevent that by either destroying the tile completely or covering up all of the ones with the white arrows, which means it will only move one. But remember, this is going to move one as well. And then this will move two. So if I just make that move one and then that moves one and this moves two, it will go there and come off. And then we're going to get two more. You are fighting a battle against ever increasing enemies. OK, so green is in. I cannot choose green as the site that I don't play on this round. OK, here we go. <sighs> right. Now I have my hero again. I can come on and stomp and do some other stuff. Um, and I think that's what we want to do. I think I might stomp this one because then I get the most effect out of that. I just need to make sure that I deal with this and or this. Wow. Okay, right. Now, that prob I've got a, a wizard tower now and I'm definitely playing on green. It's just what other color am I playing on? So I can put this wizard tower here. Okay. This allows me to place one of these, but because of that icon, I can rotate it however I want. So I can put it there. Okay. Um, again, I haven't decided which color I'm not playing on this turn yet, but I'm definitely playing on green. Hmm could have done with the sharpshooter. Sharpshooters have a range of two. They are really good. Um, okay. I think I think orange is the color that I'm not going to play on this round. Okay. So we're playing on green and purple this round. I think I'm in real trouble here. <laughs> this is not an easy game. Um, and taking seven damage on the first round, probably not the best move because I have no safety net now whatsoever. I can't let a single thing escape off the board. Uh, so I'm playing on green and purple. So I'm going to play this on here. Oh, no, actually, we're going to play the... Oh, I've got two marksmans. Uh, I didn't need these. These are a bit of a waste because um, I can rotate it however I want to. But actually, I need it to go on there. OK, so that's that marksman played on there. So I'm playing on green and purple. Yeah, not cheating. Right. Next. I'm going to move my hero. We're going to move up to three spaces, but we're going to go on here and then I'm going to use my basic attack. And I'm going to I am going to put it and I could put it over three, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put it over two because then if I do. I get that and I can basically put these on adjacent ones. So that's going to go on there. Uh, I might change my mind. I might put it on there. OK, and this is going to go on. There. OK, so that's my hero done. Sorry, I should have picked the card up, put it back in my hand and played it again. Right. So I think. Oh, is that going to do that? That might do that. Yep. OK, 
So I'm going to play the footman card here on green. That puts two soldiers out, which go on here. Okay, so that's that tile gone. Do need to do something about this. So at the moment, this is going to move one, and that's going to move two. And I might actually want that to move two. Because if this only moves one, what's next is we have a portal tile. And I do not want that portal tile to move to the end. Because that's what happened in my first game of this on Tuesday, <laughs> on Thursday, and then I lost completely. So I think I'm going to play, what can we play on? Purple and green. If I put this... here then I can put this and again I've got to follow this exactly but I put it there okay I've still got some things I still have some cards do we want to play these or do we want to upgrade them I don't want to stop this moving. I'm happy for this to move one and I'm happy for that to move two. I say happy. This is still a little risky. And the more you destroy, the more crystals you get, which means the more cards you can buy. So green and purple, green and purple. Okay. What's the three one? Oh, that sharpshooter is nice. I think I'm going to upgrade the marksman. So the marksman is upgraded into a sharpshooter. Okay. Um, I'm going to change my mind on that footman. And I'm actually going to make it a militia instead. And then I'm going to play an artillery here. So an artillery puts that on there, like that, and that on there. Okay, and then I'm going to upgrade the footman, so that goes back into knights. I need to remember you can play on top of the soldier towers, if you want to. Right, okay. So with the arrows covered, the car does not move. No, with the arrows covered, uh, th this is still going to move one. The arrows mean it will move two. So this is still going to move two. If you'd have covered the arrows, it would have st it would have moved one. Right. Let's see if this has worked. Advance the horde. Uh, no, sorry. Destroy horde tray. So this is destroyed. Uh, my hero takes another damage. And then this tray is destroyed. And I get a crystal as shown on the back. Okay. And then. We advance the horde trays. So this one moves one and this one moves two. It pushes me out of the way. So I go on to there and it moves one, two to here. Oh, this is bad. Okay. I then pick up cards. So I get my hero card back. I get these two cards. I get this card. I get this card. All of these back. Okay. And then. We spend crystals. I only have two crystals. Do I want to wait until I have an extra crystal? Uh, I think I do. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna wait. Yeah, I think so. We'll 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 see what happens. We'll see. <laughs> Let's see if I can't work this out. Right. Okay. So next round, spawn horde trays. So the first horde tray comes in here, which is this one, All right? And then the next one is the portal. Remember, there are two portals. Uh, I need some more of these. So it can't come in here because that's occupied, so it comes in here. Now, the portals are slightly different. Remember, if a portal card ever moves off the exit, lose the game immediately. You never cover up the number in the middle. OK, but the number in the middle indicates the minimum level of tower you need to be able to attack that card. Heroes cannot attack a portal card, so you can never put a hero on one 
Uh, you can move through it, but you can't go on it. And your hero's basic attack uh, does not go on there. I've just remembered the bench. I should have been calling my other characters in and I'd completely forgotten. Uh, so I've made the game harder for me by forgetting that I can call in my other characters. That's my fault. Very, very tired, so apologies for that. I will still try and succeed, but yeah, <laughs> this is going to be a struggle. I'll remember this turn. Um, but these have actually, these have got uh, grey surroundings on them. Now that is a special rule to say that uh, soldiers cannot be placed on them as well. So I can't use soldiers on this. I cannot use heroes on this. And there is another thing about portal cards. Every time you attack a portal card with a tower, the tower is destroyed. So you've seen that I've been building up a nice set of cards. These are now actually going to get used up. If I use these to attack this card, they're going to get used up. Right, so we're in trouble because I'd forgotten that I could call in help from my friends. They were obviously on holiday. But now we are playing tower and hero cards. Right, so what we're going to do is the, this tile comes back. I can't get rid of that one. I think I'm going to get rid of the purple one this turn. But let's see. Now, I have a new type of card which we've not seen before, which is the sharpshooter. Now, the sharpshooter, if you look carefully, if you can see it, it actually has two arrows pointing forwards. So what that means is if it's attacking forward, it can go at a range of two. Now, the sharpshooter is amazing because it's basically got three little one by ones that can you can basically you know go go wherever and i think i'm probably going to use that to attack this um let's have a look because i do have the artillery we might get rid of green yeah let's get rid of green this turn so we're we're playing on yellow and purple i'm not going to play that just yet I'm going to play the artillery here. Uh, oh, no, hang on a minute. Let's, let's first decide where my hero is going to go. And also, which hero I'm going to bring in. Okay, so I think Ignis is going to go one, two onto here. Oh, no, because if I do that... No, Ignis is going to go into there. And then Ignis is going to use his melee attack on those two, which means I can deal a little one by one on here and on here. Okay, I cannot do affect this because this is this is a portal card, so this cannot be affected by heroes. Right, that's Ignis. Now, Charlie's just joined in. Hi, Charlie. Thank you for joining in. Which hero am I going to bring in? this turn and these are one use only i bring them in they come in for a turn they do their thing and then they go so i think we're going to bring it in um now magnus but no that's not a good one i think we might bring in yes we're going to bring in Illyria swift wind so off the bench, Illyria is going to come into play for a turn. This is the two-figure one because it's got a little cat as well, which is one of the cutest miniatures I've seen. So Illyria is going to come in, and Illyria has got three movement points, and she's going to go here. Yeah, okay. And then her basic attack is this. Um, oh, no, hang on a minute. That's not going to work. Because it's range, you cannot use a... Oh no, it's melee. It says melee there. I thought, for some reason, I thought this was ranged. Bear with us a minute. I'm just going to check that. Hero basic attacks. Wrong book. I thought Illyria was a ranged character. Here we go. Basic attacks, heroes... Uh, ranged attacks with ranged arrows work like tower and follow the placement rules. A hero cannot use ranged attacks to target a horde tray they are engaged on. Right, okay, that just means it's a physical attack, not melee. So there's physical and there's, uh, and there's magic, but it is a ranged attack. So yeah, she can't use that on the tile she's on. So actually, that's not much good for me. 
Okay, maybe we'll bring Magnus Spellbane in instead. No, no, that's actually no good for me either. Let's bring in... <laughs> Let's bring in Malik. Uh, right, so Malik comes in, and when you bring uh, another hero off the bench, you ignore basically the movement restrictions. They can basically turn up and come anywhere whatsoever. So uh, Malik is going to come in, and he's going to go on uh, here, like this. And then Malik's ability is he's got a nice 2x2 two two hammer smash bosh. Uh, and for each blank square um, that is covered, I can move part of that damage onto somewhere else. But I can't go on here, and this is already full. So I'm just going to put it on there. Okay, and that is... That is Malik done. Malik has been used. Thank you very much, Malik. One use only. Uh, but things are starting to look a bit better now, as you can see, <laughs> now that I've remembered the rules that I can bring in my other heroes. Now, we do have this portal card. This is a worry, but if I get rid of both of these, it's only going to move one. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm happy about that. But we probably do want to start getting rid of it bit by bit. So, what are we going to play? We're going to play the sharpshooter here. Um, and it, it is just going to get, get rid of these. There you go. That, that's that gone. Right. Don't need to worry about that anymore. I'm playing on yellow and purple. We're good. We're good. Um, what have we got left up here? We've got three things up here, and I have knights. So we can get rid of that as well. Yeah. So I'm going to play the knights card here. And I'm going to put three soldiers on here. So that's that gone. So this tile's gone, that tile's gone, that tile's gone. We have this left. And I am going to play on yellow here. And I'm going to put this piece. And it's got to go that way up. Oh, I don't want it to go that way up. Okay, so it's going to go here. Which means it goes that way. Oh, that's still the wrong way up. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I want to be able to rotate it. So I can with a wizard, but that destroys the wizard. I think we're going to have to. Yeah, so I'm going to go on there, and this allows me to flip, rotate it however I want. Boom, right, so that's that gone. And then this is actually destroyed. So what you do is you flip it face down. Uh, I cannot build on there this round, and then that card will go back to the supply at the end of the round. Now, I don't have to get rid of all of that, but I can get rid of most of it. So I'm going to play a marksman here, and then lose it. So a marksman goes on there. Uh... Yeah, I could almost have got rid of it. Um, but this, this is fine. This is okay. I'm going to upgrade these three cards. So Militia gets upgraded into Footmen. Artillery gets upgraded into a Howitzer. And then the Adept gets upgraded into a Wizard. Right, here we go. Now we're rocking. Uh, destroy Horde Trays. Yes, I've destroyed that one, that one, and that one. Uh, so thank you very much, Malik. He disappears. All gone. And I get a crystal for that. Uh, Ignis is on this one. Now Ignis is down to zero health. So what you do is you take the figure off the board. Next round, I basically have to... You're supposed to lie it down. Uh, next round, I have to um, regenerate. So I just stand it up. I effectively miss a turn. Okay. I get a crystal for this one. And I've also destroyed this one. Which is, believe it or not, it's another crystal. Okay, so there we go. Got myself five crystals. Then the horde trays advance. This one just moves one. And then we um, pick up tower and hero cards. So these two that were destroyed, they go back to the supply. So that's the marksman and the wizard. Uh, and the knights and the sharpshooter come to my hand along with these cards. Now, do I want to spend any crystals? Uh, I think we do. Um, I think I'm going to spend three crystals uh, for a... Uh, 
level two and it's going to be uh, hmm it's going to be a marksman okay and then i am going to spend these two crystals i'm going to spend these two and i'm going to buy a level one and it's going to be a level one bombard okay right so that's spending the crystals next round we spawn new hordes so we get the first one which arrives here okay and then we get the next one which skips that one and arrives here right okay so phase two my hero basically regenerates that's it i'm back to full health but i don't get to come on the board this turn um we've got some nasty problems here but we can do something about that because we have these characters so i can definitely do something with this now and i think now is the time to bring in Illyria swiftwind i also get this back and i need to decide which which color card i can't play on this turn so Illyria comes in we'll get it right this time uh Illyria is going to go on uh here like so Then we are going to do our basic attack, which is range. So I cannot do it on here. And it can't go on here because this is a portal card. So it is one of these and one of these. And this can be rotated however we want. So I'm going to put this on here like that. And this on here like that. Okay. And we also get to respawn the wildcat in our space. So the wildcat is going to arrive and he's going to go here like that okay yeah definitely going to paint this um right so that's Illyria done done a basic attack done that spawn the wildcat thank you very much Illyria very useful stepping in while Ignis is wounded right so we're definitely playing on green and now it's either yellow or purple that we're not playing on uh don't need to get rid of this but I'm probably going to. I think, I think we are going to get rid of it. Um, and we're going to get rid of it with probably the sharpshooter. Yeah. So I think it is yellow that we're not playing on this turn. So, okay. So we're playing on green and purple. Uh, and we're going to play the sharpshooter. We'll put it down here on the purple, doesn't really matter. We put three little counters on here, like that. And that sharpshooter is now gone. It has been used. Right, okay, next. Uh, not completely, totally worried about these, but do want to sort them out at some point. So the howitzer, is gonna go yeah this is a little bit of a waste because the howitzer attacks in all three directions but i'm only going to use it for the front bit now here, here's some rules that i'll tell you about now because all of the enemies are covered on this portal tile i do not need to place the howitzer on here because if I did place any of the howitzer's tiles on here, the howitzer would be destroyed because it's attacked a portal tile. Now, if there was one space, I would have to put it on there and that would destroy the howitzer. But because it's already full, I do not have to place the tile if I don't want to. So that howitzer has been placed, that's done that. Again, a little bit of a waste, but that's okay. So we're playing on green and purple. Um, I'm going to play the Bombard here, which is just a little tiny explosion straight ahead. And then a little tiny explosion either to the left or to the right. And we'll have a little one to the right. Okay. Then we're going to play a Marksman on purple here, which allows me to put one of these here, like so. 
Um, do I want to do any upgrading or do I just want to stick these on the board? I think we're going to stick these on. So we'll play a wizard here. Uh, I can orientate, orientate this however I want to. But I think I've been quite inefficient with this. So yeah, I'm actually going to change that count and put it there. I'm going to put the wizard there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Yeah, I'm going to use the ability of you can play a, uh, a soldier card on top of another one. Okay, and I don't think that gets rid of it. I think it's just a rule for soldier cards. Playing tower cards, the soldier, soldier towers also allow you to place an extra tower on a building site. Normally, you can only place one tower on each building site you own. However, a soldier tower can be placed on top of another single tower or a single tower may be placed on top of it. This allows you to have up to two towers on a building site as long as at least one of them is a soldier tower. There you go. So I can do that. So two soldiers come out and one goes on there and one goes on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the knight's card here and basically cover that up with two remaining soldiers. There you go. So I've not got any cards in hand. Yeah. So I'm not upgrading any cards this turn at all. And we are now destroying hero cards, hero trays. Sorry, horde trays. <laughs> so we've destroyed this. Now you don't get any benefit for destroying a portal card. You don't get any reward or crystals or anything else, but you've got to destroy them to win the game. So that is portal one destroyed. This is destroyed. This gets me a crystal. And this is also destroyed. And that gets me a crystal as well. Right, there we go. Uh, advanced horde trays. Nope, none of them advance. And then we pick up hero cards. So this one gets destroyed. Uh, and then these all come back to my hand, along with all of the ones I upgraded, which was none. Okay, spending crystals. I think I'm going to, because I've just realized if I don't, if I spend them and buy a level one card and then don't play it, it upgrades to level two. So it's probably better to do that rather than wait. Um, let's take a mage. Yeah. Right, next round, spawn new hordes. So we get this one on here and we have our second portal card. So remember, if I defeat both portal cards then at the, and survive till the end of the round, then that's a win. Okay. We should be okay with this. We're going to try and win this turn. It's trickier than it looks. Yes, it is. Oh, hero card comes back. Thank you very much. Uh, and I can now play it. But I'm not bothered about it. I, the, it doesn't matter about this. I could completely ignore this. If I kill this, then I can, I can completely ignore this because it will move to, which would be one, two, and I'm fine. So I can completely ignore it. I just need to worry about that. And I've still got Magnus Spellbane to come in. So I think we probably can deal with this. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got. We have, we're definitely playing on yellow. Are we playing uh, on purple or green? Let's say, Let's say we're not going to play on... Ah, now some of these can have soldiers on them. Yeah, it's just the other one was completely no soldiery. I'm going to not play on purple this turn. Or green. No, no, we're going to play on green. I'm not going to play on purple. Right, okay. I'm making it look easy. Yeah, <laughs> it's not easy. Uh, portal is three. Ah, yes. Thank you, Marcel. I'd forgotten that. I probably cheated when I played this on Thursday. This has got a number three in the middle. So it has to be level three towers. Oh, right. So wait a minute. I'm not going to be able to get rid of it this turn. I am. Oh, maybe I will. No, I don't think I am. Oh, I can try. I can absolutely try, but I don't think I will. Um, 
Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it has to be level three cards, minimum. So we're going to put that there. We're going to put the howitzer there, which puts this on there, like so. And it puts this wherever I want to on here. So I'll come back to that in a minute. This is now destroyed. Right. Um, yeah, I don't think I am going to be able to destroy this this turn. So, wizard tile goes there. I can put this wherever I want to. So I'm going to put that there. And then that's this destroyed. Um, and then I've got the knight, which is a level three card. So... I think I might as well put it on now. Yeah, I'll put it. I'll put that on there. Uh, although these are going to disappear afterwards, so maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I just want to do those bits of damage and save that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. This is going to be a little trickier than I thought because of that number three. So I'm going to have to upgrade. If I don't upgrade, I can't do anything next round. So we are going to have to upgrade uh, Footmen into the Knights, ready for next round. And next round, I play the two Knight cards and go one, two, ah, that can't have a Knight on it. But one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I need something to hit that. So I need to upgrade my Marksman. So my marksman is being upgraded into a sharpshooter. Sorry, I put that in my hand, didn't I? That shouldn't be in my hand. There you go. Right, so I'm ready for next turn. I'm, uh, sorry, next round, I'm ready. I can defeat it with the cards that I have. Um, so yeah, I might as well bring these in. So we'll bring Ignis in. So this is probably gonna go there. We'll bring Ignis in here. Uh, and then Ignis places a damage thing. Uh, in fact, let's put that there. And let's put his damage thing. Ooh, actually, let's put it there. And then this damage thing is going there. Like that. Okay. And then are we going to bring Magnus Spellbane in? I don't know whether we are. I don't know whether we need to. I've not cheated over this turn. No, I can play on green and yellow. So. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to upgrade a mage into an adept. I'm going to upgrade a Bombard into an Artillery. Uh, I'm going to play the Knight there for three Soldiers. Uh, covering up that one. That one. I only need the two, really. Uh, and then I'm going to call in Magnus Spellbane to come on there. Magnus has abilities, but can't use the abilities. Uh, and that's it. We are done. So... Uh, next is destroying horde trays. Yes, we've destroyed this one. So Ignis takes a point of damage. Uh, these all come off. I get a crystal. There you go. That's that gone. Um, didn't destroy this one. And then advance horde trays. This moves two. Okay. Uh, pick up tower and hero cards. So that's destroyed. The wizard is destroyed. The howitz is destroyed. Uh, and then spend crystals. I've only got one crystal, so I don't spend anything. Get me card back. Get these cards. And it is next round. Oh, I get this back. Right. Okay. Uh, Hero has three movement. 
Yes, it does. Uh, isn't that more than three movement from the beginning? Oh, did I cheat? Okay, I may have cheated. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's only got three movement. Can movement be diagonal? I'm not sure. I'm not going to rewind it now. I just won't put a sticker on the board and I won't eat my cake. If I've cheated, I apologize for that. Uh, so when a hero comes on, where is it? Heroes. Playing your hero card can move one space for each movement point. Uh, stops moving to perform an action can move both orthogonally and diagonally. Yes. Heroes can move on the path through building sites and everything else. So I could have gone one, two, three. Okay, so we're all good. Uh, and the knight, I think the knight was okay. Oh, you mean in the knights? Yes, pick up that. Right, okay, so we are good to go. Next round, we spawn on here. So this moves me out of the way. That goes there. And then we spawn on here. And this goes there. Now, all we need to do is kill this. Because if this moves two and this moves two, that's fine. Doesn't matter whatsoever. Um, but actually, I can stop them moving by, by me going on them. I think we're good. I think we've got this sorted. Um, I get the purple one back. And now I'm going to remove either the yellow or the green. I'm removing the yellow one. So this round, I'm playing on purple and green. Um, and yeah. So we play, I thought I had two sharpshooters. Oh no, it's the knights, that's it. Right, so the sharpshooter is going on uh, here. Oh, you've got to move your hero first. So I'll just move the hero onto there, right? Sharpshooter goes to here and puts three little things on here. One, two, three, and he's destroyed. Um, then the knights come in here and go one, two, three, and then the knights are destroyed. These are both level three cards. Um, and then we can play the other knights on the purple one here. I only need one more, uh, and that's it. I don't need to play the rest of the round because... It doesn't matter about these. What's going to happen is this is going to get destroyed. Then that's going to move to that's not going to move because my hero's on it. Uh, and then we are done. Whew. Right. We survived. That is scenario one done on difficulty level two. So here we go. I get the little map out and I get two stickers. Uh, one sticker because I've already put a one star on it. So I have now done that scenario, Rifts of Time, on the next difficulty level. Okay, there you go. And you've seen scenario one. Now I am going to play scenario two. Um, as I mentioned, the scenarios gradually introduce new rules as it goes on. And I did want to show you at least the second scenario tonight. And then we'll have a look at the time and we'll see how tired I am. Um, because scenario three is actually very different. But we're now going to pack this away. I'm not going anywhere, so you don't need to. I mean, if you want, if you want a couple of minutes break, feel free to take a break while I set up for the next round. If you are not taking a break, if you are in the chat, then yeah, please let me know what you thought about it. Because I know a number of people, as I say, saw the artwork, saw the theme of the game, and thought this was some, you know, silly, light, fun, random game, and it's not. It's very tactical. It's very puzzly. Um, and I just want to just want to see what your initial impression is about the game. Uh, yeah, so post your thoughts. Marcel is saying he's really looking forward to his own cover. Yeah, you'll love this, Marcel. I mean, you'll be, you'll beat it on the highest difficulty level, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll have to have extra rules just for you, just to make it harder. Um, right. Okay, we're going to go scenario two. I'm just going to get a drink. Now I've not played this scenario before, so. We will see how we get on. Right, scenario two, from past and future. Those first portals were just the beginning of something bigger. More have opened and through them more foes emerge by the moment. While the first portals brought red caps last seen during the war with the spider goddess, from these newest ones, shamanic healers have emerged that we've never seen before. Perhaps these portals connect our kingdom in the future as well as in the past. 
The details are not important right now. Rally the troops and end this threat before the time-bending magic gets out of hand. Okay, so in this scenario, heroes have special abilities. Your hero has two special abilities. You normally have four to choose from, but in scenario two, we're only using the ones with this icon on, okay? So you start the game with these two special abilities. You can use these, they are free actions to use, and when you use them, you flip them over. Um, and then you have to basically take a turn recovering to get them back, okay? So they're the special abilities. Spells, there are spells in the game, you don't use them in this scenario. The level four towers are not used in this scenario uh, again, so we're not using those. Let's just put these back. Um, yeah, let's, let's tidy up a little bit. Right, hordes. So from wave one, I need to get all of the cards. Let's move this out of the way because it's going to be a different map setup. So we need the red wave ones. We need the orange wave ones. Uh, and we need two green ones. Two green ones. Uh, where have I put them? Put them here. Yeah, I mean, these cards go up to seven. Okay, they get, they get super dangerous. Um, right, don't show hand cards. Uh, yeah, alpha problem. Yeah, you, yeah, just don't show cards in your hand um, or play with people who tell you what to do. <laughs> I mean, I know it's hard because it's a puzzle game and it's cooperative. And if you know what move somebody should make, then you feel, well, if, if I don't tell them, they'll make the wrong move and then we'll lose. But, you know, that's kind of part of it. So we need some green ones. Uh, what else do we need? I need the twos. Where are the twos? Fours, fives. Oh, twos. I think these have got mixed up. Threes, 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 threes. Twos. Two. Two. Three. Fours? What are fours doing in here? Fours. Right, okay. I think that's it. Yeah, okay, right, I think that's it. Uh, oh, and we need three portals from scenario two. Wow, okay, so three portals this time. Yeah, okay, and we're not, we don't see what the level is on the back. Alan's here as well, hi Alan, good to see you, thanks for joining in. Right, okay, so we need to set up the board like so. So all of this can go. We are using a different map setup, we're using B2 which is this one. Yeah, B2. Okay, so we're using this as the main board. Uh, we need A5. I'll use A9, doesn't really matter. Um, which goes, oh, we might need to zoom out a little bit. Yeah, I think we're going to have to zoom out a little bit because I'm going to need a bit more space. We're going to need a bigger table. Says everybody who's ever played a bit little Zerda game. Right. That's going to go there because that is going there. Right. There we go. Uh, I need a three by one piece of path. Yeah. So lots of extra bits in this game that you haven't seen. So that you can have all sorts of different configurations. Uh, and we need some of this here. And that's it. Right, that's that done. The exit is here. Okay, and we have two spawn points again. So spawn point one is here, spawn point two is here. So they're both they're going to come down here and into here. So for one player, I start the game with six crystals. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's gather these. Right, okay, so we need yellow here, purple here, yellow here, yellow here, 
green here, green here, purple here, uh, yellow over here, green up there, uh, purple here, and I need another purple one. Where's my... There they are. And another purple one there. Right, okay, so that's that done. Uh, six crystals, no spells, two special abilities. Right, we start with a level one orange one there, a level one green one there, and another level one green one there. Right, so these are the green ones. I think there are four of these. Okay, so one's going here, and one's going here. And then we have a yellow one, which is this one. Okay, and then we need to build two spawn stacks. So what we have here is spawn stack number one. Bottom of the stack is a red one. Okay, followed by portal two number two. Sorry, scenario two, portal number two followed by a red two, followed by a yellow two, followed by portal number one, followed by a yellow one. Right, so that's spawn stack one. And spawn stack two is a red one, a red two, portal number three, orange two, red one, and orange one. Okay, and that is spawn stack number two. Okay, so we don't need these, these can go. And yeah, there's big piles of cards off screen that you can't, <laughs> that you can't see. Um, yeah, as I say, we're, we're just, this is the tip of the iceberg here. Um, there's a whole load of extra stuff, there's spells, there's other characters. Yeah, there's, there's a whole load of stuff with this game. Right, I start with the same things as I did before. So that is an adept, an archer, an artillery and a militia and I am more than happy to get help from the chat on this now bearing in mind there is like an eight second delay uh, but because I've not played this scenario before um, yeah we'll see how we get on we do need to decide what difficulty level we're going to play on okay uh, we actually start the game with so normally six crystals uh, but yeah, what difficulty level are we going to play on? Are we going to play on the easy setting, or are we going to go? Uh, are we going to play on the same difficulty level as I've just played? What do you think? I'm not going to play any more difficult. So, do you want me to play on the same difficulty level? If you do, put same in the chat. Uh, if you want me to play on the easier difficulty level, put easy in the chat. Uh, I'll happily play on either. Um, I know, I know what you're going to say. You're, you're all going to say same. <laughs> But let me know. Let me know what you think. Because that'll determine how much extra life or how much life we get. And it'll also determine uh, how many extra crystals we get. So if we play on the same difficulty level, we get eight health. If we play on an easier one, uh, so eight health and one crystal. If we play on an easier setting, I'm going to get another four health and I'm gonna get another crystal. Okay, so we've got play on ghost stories difficulty level. <laughs> yes, not everybody will know what that means, but yeah, thank you. Is, is that an option? Um, there is actually like a difficulty level five, but I'm definitely not gonna play on that. Um, so uh, Alan is saying easy. I've always liked you, Alan, thank you very much. Uh, Jonathan is saying easy. It'd be nice to see me win. Yeah, cause then I get me cake. Okay, we've got two for same and two for easy. So the next, the next thing in the chat is what I'm going to go with. Whatever message appears next in the chat, either same or easy, will be the one that I play with. Just going to wait for, wait for it to arrive. Easy. Thank you very much, Kyle. We're going to play on easy. Right, okay. I'm not going to look at anything else now. So I need four more health. One, two... Three. Okay, where's the other where's the other health things? Oh, and I need all of my other heroes as well. Don't forget about them this time, Paul. 
can't believe I completely forgot about them. Um, they were sat there on the sidelines waiting to be brought in and I completely forgot about them. Right, so they are, they are the other heroes on the bench, ready to go. What's these cards? Oh, yeah, these are the level four towers. I'll show you these at the end. Uh, they're very cool. Right, looking for another health. Yeah, you can't see the amount of mess I've got off camera here. Okay, I'm going to use this one. And I'm just going to use something else to represent my health for now. Okay, there you go. Uh, we're good to go. Also, if you were playing on the easy difficulty level, uh, you would get a spell as well. But there are no spells in this scenario. Right, so we now have some new mechanisms. They're not out yet, so I will save them for now. But there are going to be some new icons that we're going to discover during the game. And yeah, when they come out, I will explain them. Right. I'm quite excited. I'm nervous because <laughs> I know this is not going to be easy, although we are on easy. Um, but yeah, it's fun. So let's just have a look at what we've got. This is going to move two. And this is going to move two. Now, these two are the same distance from the exit. So what happens in that situation? Um, moving horde trays. Check for abilities, starting with the horde tray nearest the exit. Uh, yeah. Sometimes a horde tray cannot move, in which case it bypasses the path. Some scenarios will feature forked paths. When selecting which hordes to move next, move all hordes from the section of the path with the lowest numbered spawn token first. Okay, so this one will go before this one because it's at spawn point one. Uh, but then this is going to move two and this is going to move two. So we need to do something with these because otherwise we lose on round one. Okay, so we're not going to do that, are we? No, Paul. We're going to remember our hero abilities and we're going to remember our friends. We also have these two new things. So this is Flaming Frenzy. If this covers exactly three enemies, I can choose a hero to heal. Uh, and if, this, if Fire and Brimstone covers three enemies, I can put two little ones on an adjacent horde. So we could do that one, actually. And we could try and get rid of this almost straight away. So let's, let's do that. Let's start. Phase two. I haven't decided yet which uh, colour I'm not going to play on. Uh, you can't quite see that, can you? Let's just move it across a little bit. There you go. Made a little bit of a mess. But you get the idea. Okay, right. So... I'm going to activate Ignis. Ignis is going to come on here and go one, two, stand there. Then I'm going to do my um, fire and brimstone special ability. We're going to start as we mean to go on. If this covers exactly three enemies, which it does, because I'm going to cover these three, then I get to put two extra little one by ones on one adjacent horde, which is up here. So I'm going to put it on there and there. Okay. Now that has flipped over. You go and you get it back when you recover, which is an action to do. Uh, let them through with enough damage to leave you with one health. It worked last time. <laughs> I'm not going to do that again. Definitely not going to do that again. That was, that was a bit worrying, that was. Okay, so... We've done that. Are we going to call in for... Oh, and I've got my basic attack. So I'm going to use my basic attack, which is this, which is melee, so it has to be on the same tile. And if it covers exactly two enemies, which it does, uh, place another one by one on an adjacent horde. So I'm going to put this on here. Okay, right. Need to do something with this. Definitely need to slow it down if I don't manage to kill it. So we could just slow it down, or we could bring in some friends. No, I think I don't want to bring Illyria because there's nothing else within range to attack. I don't want to bring in Malik because there's nothing else adjacent. I could bring in Magnus. Oh, we could do it over there. Um...
Here's a question which hasn't occurred. If in the solo game I use I bring in a hero off the bench and then that doesn't kill the horde tray, what happens? During this round you may activate the bench hero in addition to your main hero, placing their miniature anywhere you want on the board and performing the hero's basic attack. At the end of the round, remove the bench hero from the game. Right, okay, so yeah, he doesn't stick around. Um... So I think this is a little risky, but I'm just going to play a militia here. Okay, so I'm going to say that the colour that I'm not using this round is, I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. Right, the colour I'm not using this round is orange. Yellow, triangle, thing. Right. So I've played a militia there. I'm going to put one soldier on there. And that's actually going to stop that from moving completely. Does it stop it from moving? I think it stops it from moving. Yeah. Yeah, it stops it from moving. Right. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to play any other cards. So I'm going to upgrade my artillery into a howitzer. I'm going to upgrade my archer into a marksman. And I'm going to upgrade my adept into a wizard. There you go. Right. Destroy horde tray. This has been destroyed. My hero takes one point of damage. I get one crystal. Uh, where's the crystals? Crystals. Okay. That's the horde trays destroyed. Advancing. This one doesn't advance because the soldiers are blocking it. So that just gets removed. Uh, and this one moves two. One. Two. I kind of wanted that to advance one space. Just going to check the rules on the, the double movement. Something's reminded me from when I played a prototype of this. And I just want to check about the double movement, the swiftness ability. Uh, Horde tray with any number of speed icons will attempt to move twice. If it's got speed, it attempts to move twice. Soldiers will only block will block only the first movement. Heroes can block both movements, but will suffer two damage. If the first damage defeats the hero, they are immediately... Yeah, so soldiers will block only the first movement. Right, okay, so I'll tell you what. Here's what I wanted to do. Instead of putting the soldier on there, I'm just going to put the soldier somewhere else. So what that does is it only blocks the first of its movement. Then it ends up here, which is exactly what I wanted. Right. So that's what we did. The, tr the, the horde trays have advanced. I pick up my cards, including this one. Uh, where was Ignis? Ignis was here and then has to move off. Right, okay. And then we're spending crystals. So I'm going to buy uh, a level one uh, and two level twos. Okay, so what are we going to buy? Uh, I really like the sharpshooter. So I'm going to buy a marksman. I'm going to buy two marksmans. Because I think they're great. And I'm going to buy a mage. Okay, so I've bought cards. This comes back. We go to round two. We spawn a new horde trays. So I get one here, which is this one. And we get one here, which is this one. Right, no new icons yet. So nothing else we need to explain. This cake is, oh, these are really nice. Vicky's baked these yesterday and they're, they're really, really nice. I had one earlier on and now I just, it's staring at me and I want more. Right, so we can easily get rid of this one. Uh, and I think that's what we want to do. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to do Ignis first. So I'm going to play Ignis. Ignis is going to go here. So they're going to use his basic attack to cover two of the enemies. I could kill all three, but I'm going to cover two. 
because if I do that, I get to put one on here and one on here. Okay, right, that's Ignis done. Do we want to bring in a friend? I think we do. I think we want to bring in Illyria because of her special stuff. So Illyria comes in and goes here because Illyria's basic attack has got two arrows in one direction. So we can actually put, um, yeah, we can do all sorts of fancy stuff here. So that can go there and that can go there, for example, and spawns a wildcat that goes here. Okay, so that's Illyria done. Brilliant. Uh, oh, I need to decide which colour I can't play on this turn, uh, which cannot be yellow. I've got to play on yellow. It's which one of these two do I want to remove? Right, okay. So I definitely want to get rid of that, which I can do with that. That's easy. Um, and also do that. Oh, that's, that's actually quite easy as well. So yeah, we're definitely playing on yellow. Uh, and I think we're also going to play on purple this turn. So I'm going to get rid of green. I'm now going to play my howitzer here. So I'm going to rearrange these tokens a little bit from what we did do and I'm going to put them there like that. So then the howitzer does a three by one and it can't be, ro this can't be rotated, but then it does a two by one which can be rotated and just goes on there. Okay, so that's that done. This is not quite done. Oh, have I messed up? Yeah. Oh, no, what I can do is I can use the ability of putting a soldier tower on top of another one. And that goes on there. Right. So we're okay there. That's these two done. This is going to move two, and that's going to move two, and they're going to both end up there again. Which I think is okay. But I can't upgrade all three marksmen, so there's no... I might as well play that and put this on here like this. Yep. Uh, and I can't upgrade a wizard, so I might as well play the wizard. And uh, the wizard can play on purple. And do I, where do I want to put it? <coughs> Why are these always the wrong way around? Oh, it doesn't matter. I can rotate it. So that goes there. And I can rotate this however I want to. So I'll put it there. And then with these cards in hand. Okay, so this seems easy for now. It's not going to be easy because the portals have not come in. Uh, doesn't the benched hero slow the movement of the horde? Yes, you're right. You're absolutely right. And if we don't kill this, this round, these two are going to disappear. Yeah, you're right. Okay, we need to get rid of this one then. Um, and I can do that. If I just do that in there instead and do that on there. Yeah, thank you very much. I'd forgotten these heroes are going to disappear and they're not going to be lasting damage. So that goes on there, that goes on there. And I'm going to keep these cards. I, I'm going to upgrade these cards. So that gets upgraded to that. And that gets upgraded to that. Right. Done. Destroy horde trays. This is destroyed. Ignis takes a point of damage. This is destroyed. Illyria disappears. And this is destroyed. Right, so I get three crystals. Uh, Ignis ends up here. I assume they're all one crystal on the back. Yeah, one crystal on the back of that one. One crystal on the back of that one. And one crystal on the back of that one. Right, okay. So that's them done. Advanced horde trays. This advances two spaces and pushes Ignis to here. One, two. 
Uh, pick up tower cards and hero cards. Should have rotated. Flip the wizard tower. We're okay, aren't we? Yeah, Ro rotate means you can also flip it. Yeah, that, that spinny rotate icon means you can also flip it. Spend crystals. I've got three crystals. So I am going to spend three crystals and I'm going to buy an adept. There you go. Right. Next round, spawn new horde trays. So we get another one here. So this is our first portal. Let's see what nasty things we've got on here. Okay, we have two new icons to explain. The first one is this one with the blue border. This cannot be affected by magic attacks. There are two types of attacks. There's physical and there's magic. And you can see, if you look at the towers, in the bottom left, it is either physical or it is magic. Okay, so I cannot put magic on those. Also, if you look at your uh, heroes, it tells you there whether it's magic or physical. Okay, we also have this icon. This is a healing icon. So what happens if before this moves, if this is still there, if this hasn't been covered over, all damage is removed from the tile. Okay, so that's a healing one. It is also a number one. That's interesting. This is going to be quite easy to, to get rid of. There's also not many things on there. And then we get this one. Okay, nothing special on that one. Just lots and lots of hordes. Right. Off we go, playing cards. So I've got lots of cards in hand, um, but this only needs level one cards. That is interesting, because I don't have many level one cards. Uh, and I need to be very careful, because I have lots of magic cards in my hand <laughs> that are of no use at all. I, I could just leave this until it gets here. Um, Ooh, yeah, what are we going to do? Right, so, this is interesting. This is interesting. Yeah, no need to apologise. Just keep asking the questions. I'm here to, here to help you learn how to play. <sighs> right. And you can never cover up this number in the middle. You're not allowed to cover it over. So, I think we're just going to have to try and get rid of Well, we've got to get, try and get rid of this one. We can get rid of this one this turn. That, that's easy. Are we going to call Malik? I think we might have to call Malik. Right. The colour we're not playing this turn is yellow. We're not playing on yellow this turn. Right. I'm going to play a sharpshooter here. So that allows me to put three little ones uh, range two straightforward and here so I'll, I'll, I'll do that in a minute but that sharpshooter is going there and that's going to go on there like that oh boy oh boy oh boy yeah if i'd have known that was a level one only <laughs> i'd have kept some level one cards um So we are going to play on purple, and we're going to put the marksman there, and that is going to kill the healer. There you go. So the healer is dead, and this tower is destroyed. Okay, so that's not going to heal. Or move two. Uh, what's Ignis going to do? Is Ignis actually going to come in? i tell you what, he could and then heal himself. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's activate Ignis by playing the card that I forgot to put back in my hand. We'll move him three. One, two, three. We'll then use Flaming Frenzy. So if this covers exactly three enemies. Oh, hang on a minute. How am I gonna, there. That's covered three enemies. Then one hero can heal me and then I do my basic attack I think you can do your basic attack in addition to your special attack I hope so um, uh, 
And I think we're just going to put this over these three. Yeah, that's fine. Let me just check that. I think you can do your basic attack in addition to your special attacks. Yeah, special abilities, once you've used it, flip it face down. Yeah, and then you get it back when you recover. Okay, so that's Ignis done. He did that. He did his fire and brimstone. So, no, he did his flaming frenzy and then he did his basic attack. Right, he's done. Uh, what are we playing on? Purple and green. Yeah, so I'm going to go on green there. And we're going to put that there. And then this sharpshooter ones are going to go there and there. So that's that gone. Ignis is awesome. But I'm going to lose him next round while he... Oh, no, I might not lose him next round. But I could do with recovering. Because recovering means I'll get these abilities back. I mean, if you can imagine, if this is a four-player game, each of your characters has special abilities and you'll be coordinating everything together. Fantastic. Fantastic stuff. Right. The howitzer is already level 3, so there's no point upgrading it so I can play on green. That puts that there, which means that's probably going to go there. Okay. Don't have to kill that, because it's only moving one. This is also moving one. Um, I have such fancy stuff in hand. And yes, I am bragging, but I don't actually think this is going to be enough to get rid of it. Okay, we can put... Why is this always the wrong way around? I think we might be able to get rid of this. I just don't know whether I want to. Because I kind of want to get rid of it with a little, an archer. But I'm, o I'm not going to have an archer because I'm only destroying one horde tray this turn. I don't think I'm going to be able to destroy this one. That's fine. That one will move to there. This one will move to here. And then I can get it next time. Um, but I've got all these cards in hand. So, mm, what to do? What to do? Yeah, I might as well play it. So I'm going to play uh, this. Like that. Which puts this on like that. And then that destroys that. Um, that was green. Yeah, so I'm playing on green and purple this round. Yeah, so I'm not cheating. Um... So yeah, we can actually get rid of it. Yeah, so I, th I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to put that on there, which is purple, uh, and put another, another one there like that, which gets rid of that. This might be a really bad idea. And then I'm going to play a militia on here, like that, on there. So that can't be magic, but militia is physical. So that goes on there, which also destroys that. And then I've got this level three wizard, that is really not doing anything and I can't really play it anywhere. So I just keep it. Yeah. Okay, right. Destroy horde trays. So this is destroyed. Ignis takes a point of damage. I get a crystal. Uh, this portal is destroyed. So that's that. Gone. Uh, Advance Horde Trays, this one advances one space. And then pick up Tower and Hero cards. So these are all gone. Yeah, this is, this is where it's all going to backfire, isn't it? I think I spent too much on that one. Uh, that goes there. I get that back. I get that back. I get that back. And I get that back. So I've only got four cards in hand. They're all amazing. Uh, but I only have one crystal, so I cannot spend any crystals. I can't buy anything else. And then we go to the next round.
I'll need a lot of new towers. Yes, I will. And without the crystals, I can't buy them. Right. Okay. Time for another bit of water. I'm really enjoying this. This is a really interesting puzzle. I hope you are too. Right. Spawning new horde trays. So we get a new one of these. Right. We have some more, more healers. Look at this. These are really interesting. The way these are laid out. Yeah. A new one spawns here, which means I get pushed to there. More healers. Right. And then there's a portal arriving here and here. Okay. So interesting that portal three is arriving before portal two. Is that right? Let me just check the stacks. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Portal three is going to arrive before portal two. Right. Off we go then. <laughs> so I'm getting yellow back. I'm definitely playing on yellow this turn and then either purple or green. Uh, Ignis doesn't have any of his special abilities left. Malik is here. Malik can come in and do stuff and also Magnus Spellbane can come in and do stuff. But I need the trays to be closer together for the most efficient use of that time. I might recover with Ignis. If I recover, I get both of my special abilities back and I heal to full. I think that's what we might do. Because nothing's moving two spaces. I need to get rid of this one. Definitely need to get rid of this one. Um, in fact, I don't... No, I don't. I can just ignore this one and I take two damage. Yeah, I don't have to worry about it. It's... It's these ones that I need to be worried about. So, yeah, I think I'm going to recover with Ignis. So I think you just take the hero off the board. Uh, I'll recover to full health and I'll get my special abilities back. But he's not doing anything else this round. Let me just check that. Recovery. Um, when you take this action, move the heart token on your hero board back to your maximum health and flip all of your special ability tiles face up. Okay, doesn't tell you that I take them off the board. So I guess he stays on. Okay, right, there you go. Board game Gumbo's in. Hi, thank you very much for joining in. We are on scenario two. And I, I, I don't know how well it's going. Uh, wait, wait, stick around a couple of turns. Because <laughs> it's just reached an important point where I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with all of this stuff. Um, so, yeah, so my hero recovered. So that's that done. He's having a lie down. Okay, so we're gonna, we might as well use these and deal as much damage as we can. Uh, can we destroy a tray and get some more towers? Because I am, I am now very short on towers and this howitzer is completely the wrong type of tower that I need right now. So I'm going to play this on yellow and that is just going to do a three by one tile this way. So it's going to be it's going to be there there okay i'm definitely playing on yellow the side effects of the howitzer don't do anything um i'm kind of going to leave this one i think i'll just take the damage um square cards unite yes <laughs> So, are we going to play on purple or green? I think we're going to play on green. So, purple is the colour I'm not playing on this turn. So, the sharp, this sharpshooter is going here. Okay, and I can pepper this with three little bits of damage. What I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to deal one damage on here. Okay, and then I'm going to deal two damage on there. So, I've shot the, I've shot the healers. The healers are dead. Okay, that's that. So I'm playing on yellow and green. Yellow and green. Yeah, 
So that's going to go there and that's going to go there. OK, and I can have this any which way I want and this any which way I want. This is not going to be enough. No, this is this is pointless. We're going to have to bring. Yeah, we're going to have to bring either Magnus in or Malik because I can't cover all of these healers with this. So I might actually keep the marksman, not play it, and just use the wizard. The wizard is going to go there, like that. Then what we're going to do is we are going to summon Malik. Now the problem is Malik is going to disappear at the end of the round. But I think his tiles stay. I think the tiles that he puts on stays. I seem to remember reading that. Any damage tiles produced remain in play. Yes. So Malik's going to come in. We're going to bring him off the bench. Move the howitzer one to the right. Uh, oh yeah, and play on purple instead of green. Yeah, actually, you're right. Thank you for spotting that. I play on purple instead of green. That goes there, which means that sharpshooter goes there, which means that can go there. Of course, which means that can go there. Uh, and then that goes there. There you go. Thank you very much, Marcel. Um, so Malik is being brought in. Um, yeah, Malik goes here. And then he does his basic attack, which goes here. Right, okay. So that's that done. I put the marksman back and upgrade it to a sharpshooter. Okay, I think we got that right. I played on purple and yellow, didn't play on green. In fact, I only played on purple. Yeah. And we're good. We are good. Right, destroying horde trays. This is destroyed, thanks to Marcel. So that gets a crystal. Then we advance the horde tray. So this one moves one. No healing, because all the healers have been killed. This doesn't move because Malik's there. Malik then disappears. Thank you very much for your help, mate. Um, pick up towers. I've still only got, <laughs> I've still only got four towers. Uh, so I am going to spend my two crystals. I am going to buy. Uh, I don't know what these portals have got on them. I think they've got anti magic. Oh no, some of them have got anti physical as well. So we're going to buy a mage tower. Okay, uh, how, it's a tile, how it's a three tile has to change to a two. Yep, thank you. That comes off, that goes on, I'll put it there. Right, okay, sorted. So, what have I bought? I bought a mage. Okay, we're good to go. Spent crystals, next round. So we're gonna spawn this one. Lots of healers and lots of fast moving. Uh, oh, I didn't move this one. This should have advanced. Uh, no, it didn't advance because of the... Yeah, Malik was there. Right, okay. So the portal tile actually arrives here and displaces me. Right, okay, so this has got three, heal uh, two heal three healers. It requires level two cards. It's got an anti-physical uh, enemy and two anti-magic enemies. Ah, that's such a pain, that layout. That is a real pain. Okay, and it needs level two cards. So, this is my go. Here we go. What are we going to do now? We are probably going to play... We've got to play on green. So we're playing on green, and then it's either yellow or purple. I don't think we're going to play on purple this turn. 
I think we need to play on yellow. <sighs> yeah. Okay. And we've got to get rid of that healer, otherwise all of this heals. But we can bring Ignis in. Ignis is ready to go. Uh, and he can go one, two, three. Yes. Yeah, we got this sorted. So I'm going to do Ignis first. So Ignis goes charge onto here. Uh, then I'm going to do my basic attack. Now, if this covers exactly two enemies, that is only one enemy. Yeah. So I don't think I can do this so it's as efficient as possible. Um, so I'm just going to have to put it on there. Okay, right. And I've still got Magnus Spellbane if I need him. Uh, I've got two little things on here. Can we leave this? We can. Or if we can sharpshooter it. We could sharpshooter it. It's probably what we want to do, get rid of those healers. Uh, we probably want to wizard it, actually. Yeah, okay, so I think I'm going to play on... I think we're going to play on green and purple this turn. So I'm going to get rid of yellow. Right, so I'm going to lose lots of towers again here. But let's have a look. So I'm playing. This is the this is one of the tricky things with this scenario because there's three portal cards. You're losing a lot of tower cards. Yeah, that might have been a mistake. What I did a few turns ago. We'll find out. So the howitzer goes boom on there. And then this one is a two by one, which goes on here and I can rotate it however I want. I'm going to put it on there. No. Yes. But that kills the howitzer. Okay. Has anybody played the mobile game that this is based on? Yes. It's a, it's a little app for the iPad and it's a really good little tower defense game. I got to the point in the game where I just couldn't beat it. <laughs> it was really easy to start with for the first few hours and then it just got really hard. Um, right, so that's going on here. And I'm going to put this on here, which I'm allowed to do that because that's, that's anti-physical. That can go on there, which destroys this. Yeah, I am in so much trouble. So, so much trouble. Sharpshooter on here. <laughs> I'm going to lose all my towers. It's funny. There, there, and the last healer. Okay, so that's dead. I have two towers left. How am I going to defend against all of this with two towers? Um... Okay, so that's going to go on there. Oh, that's perfect. Because that cannot be rotated, but it is just the right configuration for that. So I'm playing on purple and green, and this sharpshooter goes here, and puts three little things. Have I got three? Yeah, one, two, three. So one goes on there, one goes on there. I'm going to shoot one of the healers just for a laugh, but the other healers are going to heal that one. Uh, it's just short. Yeah, I think we're good. I think that is it. That is all my cards played and I'm not upgrading anything. Right, next round's going to be horrendous. I think I might die. If not next round, maybe the round afterwards. But we'll see how we get on. So, uh, destroying the horde trays. Yes, this tray gets destroyed. Ignis takes a point of damage. And I get, presumably, one crystal. Okay, 
This horde tray is also destroyed. And I get one crystal. Yeah, I got two crystals. That's what I needed. Um, next, the, tra the horde trays advance. So this one heals up and then advances twice. Pushes me out of the way with the first one and then ends up here. Uh, this one advances once. Okay, and then spend crystals. Oh, get cards back. I forgot to get cards back. <laughs> oh dear. I have two towers. And all of these are dead. So my level 3 howitzer is dead. My level 3 wizard is dead. And my level 3 sharpshooter is dead. We're all dead. Dave. Okay. So I'm going to spend my two crystals and I'm going to buy... Wow. This is... Yeah, this is not going to be easy. I really don't know what this card is. I'm going to have a... No, I'm not going to have a look. Let's keep it as a surprise. Because if it's physical resistance, I would buy that. If it's magical resistance, I would buy that. And I don't know. I don't know which it is. I'm going to suspect, because the first one was magic resistance, this one was a bit of both. It's probably going to be a bit of both. Or is it going to be physical? It's probably going to be a number two. It, it, it's probably going to have a number two on it. If it's got a number three on it, I'm completely screwed. I'm going to take a mage. Right. Somehow, I've got to win this game with three towers. Just so you know, I'm going to have the cake whatever. As a commiseratory cake. Commis commiseratory? Yeah, you know. Uh, commiserate my loss or celebrate my win. Whichever. Whichever. Right, we've spent the crystals. We're next round. Here we go. What is it? It is... Magic Resistance. Uh, and it needs level two. Uh, and we have... Oh, gosh. Okay. Right. Okay. Let's get the funeral march music up. Jonathan's got to go. Thank you for joining in. Yeah, we're in trouble. Right. I'm playing on yellow and then either green or purple. Ta -da. So we've got to do something with this, otherwise we lose, because it's doing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 damage. So we don't need to kill it completely. Um, but I need to do something with it. I, I mean, I can stop it moving. If I put my hero on it, it stops it moving. But then if I don't kill this one, this move two bypasses this one and I die. So I've also got to get rid of that one. And I have two cards in hand. This has suddenly got a little bit silly. Okay, so I'm going to choose to play purple. So I'm playing on yellow and purple. And I'm going to put the sharpshooter here. I'm going to put one on there. And two up there. And that flips that over. That sharpshooter is now dead. And I have these two cards in hand. And these are both level one cards. So I can't play them on this. And I can't, you can't use heroes on this. So I can't attack this. I cannot attack this card this turn. So what that means is it's moving two. So if this isn't destroyed, Right, okay, need to think about this. Yeah, good job I chose easy. I know what mistake I made. I put too much effort into killing Portal Tile 1 and I lost too many towers. That, that was definitely a mistake. And I also... I'm now thinking spending three crystals to buy a level 2 tower is probably not the best thing to do. You should spend two crystals to buy a level 1 and then just wait a turn and don't play it. Spend the three for the level two if you need to, but if you don't need to, I thought I was being efficient, but it's not. I think you spend the two crystals because then you get more towers. There's definitely a learning curve to this game. 
So anyway, this is moving to, so if this is not destroyed and stays there, I lose. I could let it move. But I can't let it move without killing some of the stuff on it. Which means I'm going to hit it with a mage tower. Ah, but before it moves, it will heal up. So this is where Magnus Spellbane comes in. Right, this is our only hope. I'm going to play this mage tower here. That is going to put this... I can't rotate it, so it, it, it's going to go there. Okay. I'm going to upgrade this mage tower into an adept because otherwise I cannot hit this next turn. In fact, I, I still don't think that's any, going to be anywhere near enough. Um, no, it's not. It's really not. I, I have totally lost this next turn because of that. That little pesky thing. Uh, yeah, my hero. Special abilities this turn. Spe well, special abilities on here might be enough. Um, but I, I want this to move off. Oh, I mean, I could use my special ability and this one. So Magnus Spellbane. Magnus comes in. Now Magnus has, uh, is interesting because he's got ranged attack. But if he's on a building site, you can actually put an extra one on there. So I think Magnus is actually going to come on here. And rather than going on the tile himself, he's going to go on here and he's going to blast. Where's Magnus's tray of special cool things? He's going to blast two of these at it. Okay. Now, if he's on it, he can then fire at another one. But because these are portal cards, I can't attack them. So I think we're going to do that. I think we're going to do that. Okay. And just let it come off. Because it doesn't matter how much health I've got, as long as as long as I survive. Um, and then we're going to use Ignis up here. Yeah, we might as well use Ignis up here. So Ignis goes one, two, three, stands on there, just in case we survive an extra round. Um, so Ignis goes there, does a basic attack which is this, and then does a Flaming Frenzy, which if it covers exactly three enemies, which it will if I do it like that. Yeah, that's hitting three enemies. Okay, uh, then I heal one. Okay. Oh, but there's still a healing one. Ah, oh, but I've got this sharpshooter. This sharpshooter from earlier on. Yeah, that's that and that. Okay, I think we survived a turn. So Magnus has done. We now destroy Horde Tray. So this portal one is destroyed. Unfortunately, you get no reward for killing a portal card. And that's it. Didn't manage to destroy anything else. So now we advance the horde trays. This advances and deals me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven damage. Seven. Okay, so that's done. Didn't kill it. Uh, this one then advances two spaces. One, two. And this one advances two spaces. One, two. Uh, and Ignis takes a damage for being on a tile that didn't get destroyed. Right, Magnus has gone. We pick up our cards. I have an Adept and a Mage, and that's gone, and we lose the game this round. Yeah, we lose because we only have... one level two card, and it's an Adept, and that is not enough to kill it. Uh, a hero can only use one action. Oh, right, I've been playing it wrong then. 
Oh, and Ignis takes two damage because of swift movement. You're right. I remember reading that earlier on. So uh, apologies. I have been using... I must have missed that bit in the rules. So I'm glad you caught that. Because I thought you could do both. Oh, no. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's perform one action, which is uh, a basic attack or a special ability um, or recover. So, yeah, apologies for that. I can't have done both of those things, but it hasn't changed the outcome because, yeah, I have only one card that can hit this and it isn't going to stop it moving. And if this leaves the board, I lose. So there you go. And that was on the easiest difficulty setting. Um, oh, yeah, but it blocks the movement. You're right. So that didn't actually go there. Ignis took two damage, but it blocked the movement. Yeah. Doesn't matter. This, this is the card which is going to end the game. I, I want to do this again. <laughs> I want to I set this up again uh, and go again. I'm not going to tonight. Uh, we're going to call it a night there. Because I don't think I'm going to have time to, to fit the scenario in again. But this was really interesting. Um, this is a really interesting puzzle. It's tricky on my own. This is something that I would definitely play with Vicky if I can persuade her to play. Because we like solving puzzles together. And this is a really interesting puzzle. And the other thing that I like about the multiplayer game. Remember, this was a solo game. So I was, I was playing on all of the building sites, but I had to choose which two each turn I could play on. The interesting thing with the multiplayer game is each player has their own fixed building sites. So in other words, if I had this mage in hand and I wanted to upgrade it, I would have to give it to another player. So then you're like, oh, well, you, you have to plan ahead. You have to think one turn ahead. You have to think, okay, I'm going to upgrade this mage to an adept. Where are we going to put this adept next turn? And that is the player that you give it to. So there's a lot of uh, working out, planning ahead for the next turn. Um, yeah, and working out how to, how to solve the puzzle effectively. Um, yeah, I am enthusiastic about the game. And, I, and as I've said a few times, and the story is, if you don't know the story, apologies if you know the story, but I, I used to do demoing for Lucky Duck Games in the UK at various events. They then wanted me to start doing more demoing for, for them at places like UK Games Expo and Dragon Meet and things like that, which I wasn't able to do because I was already booked out with another publisher to do demoing for them. Um, so they found somebody else to do the demoing who's a friend of mine, Jason Froud, great guy, um, does lots of miniature painting, and he now does their demos in the UK. But anyway, two or three years ago, I used to do demos for them, and I demoed Chronicles of Crime, Jetpack Joyride, Mutants, and all things like that. And then they wanted me to demo this game. And they said, oh, it's a tower defense game based on an app. And I was instantly not interested, okay? Because <laughs> it's like, I don't play tower defense games. Um, and I don't really play app games. And I had a look at it, and I was like, oh, this, this, right. If you want me to demo your game, I will demo your game. And I will be enthusiastic when demoing it. But it's not my kind of game at all. And then I played it and it completely was not what I was expecting. So yeah, my enthusiasm for this game is because I like puzzle games. I like solving the puzzle and I like the fact that I know what mistakes I've made in this game, but also I like being wrong. And my initial impression of this game when they told me about it and I saw the artwork and I saw the cards was that this is gonna be a silly little game. And then when I started playing it, the first time I played this with a prototype rule book and we sat down and it, it, it completely was not the kind of game I was expecting. So there you go. That's my, that's my sort of personal story with this game. So I've been waiting for the finished version to arrive for, what, a year, I think? Something like that. Um, because I've been really keen to see what they've done with it. There are a few rules changes from when I last played it. Uh, so the last version I played was actually quite interesting. Whenever you um, played a card that attacked a portal card, the tower got instantly destroyed, which means you were able to put another card on the building site straight away. That was the old rules. They've changed that. Now what happens is you flip the card face down and you cannot now put something on there until the next round when it's gone away. Except for, and this is a really nice touch, if you look at the back of the soldier cards, 
Remember, the soldier cards, you can put another tower on top of them. Well, when one's destroyed, it's got the, uh, it's got the graphics of the building site on the back. So yeah, if you attack a portal card with a soldier card and it's flipped face down, you can then put another one on top. Um, so yeah, there's a few differences between the prototype that I, got play, uh, that I played and this one. And as I say, we've just touched the surface. What I'm going to do, because I'm not going to play Scenario 3 tonight, is I'm actually just going to show you some extra bits in the game. So these are all of the different cards that come with the game. These go right up through to wave uh, one, 1 to 7. There's different colours in there. Some of them are worth two crystals. I'm not going to go into detail, but I'm just going to show you there are all sorts of extra icons on these cards, some of which we've seen before, some of which are new ones. So as the game goes on, as the campaign progresses, you will see lots of, oh, they might be build your own cards. <laughs> um, yeah, lots and lots of different creatures. There are other special abilities for the characters. So eventually your character will have a choice of four special abilities. Uh, and later on you will choose which two you want. There are also spells in the game and you will get spells depending on the scenario. There are also the level four towers. So if we'd have played scenario three, right, which is actually a completely different scenario that doesn't have any portal cards in it, um, but scenario three is, it uses the Holy Order, the Ranger Hideout, the Big Bertha and the Arcane Wizard. So these are the level four towers. There are 4A and the 4B, and we're using the 4A. So there's the Ranger Hideout. Let's just zoom in on these so you can see. Ranger Hideout, Arcane Wizard, Big Bertha, and the Holy Order. And you can see how good these are. But it takes you ages to upgrade to them. Um, but yeah, these are like, you know, crazy super powerful. I don't know why that's purple. Purple must mean something special. Um, so yeah, these are some of the level four towers. There are other level four towers. Um, the next scenario, as I mentioned, it is different. It is interesting. You don't have any portal cards. What you've got to do is you've got to escort Lilith from here. Um, where is it? Uh, winning. Yeah, there are no portal. You've got to escort Lilith to the number three spawn point. So there are three spawn points on this map and you've got enemies coming at you from three different directions and you've got to escort Lilith all the way to here. And then from scenario four, Lilith is actually a playable character. So there are five characters included in the game. This is Lilith, but you're not supposed to use Lilith until scenario four. Ah, purple means it ignores physical or magical armor. Ah, right, okay, cool. So it's not physical or magic, it's both, which means it goes in, that makes sense. Um, there you go. So let's get the campaign map out. I cannot put a sticker on it because I didn't succeed. So I have only done scenario one with two stars. And if you like me, I like making lists and ticking things off. So as I play through this game, putting more stickers on this map as I play through them on the different difficulty settings uh, is going to be great. Now, 10 scenarios included in the game. Uh, this is the, yeah, this is the base game. Uh, and it goes up to 10 scenarios and each one is replayable because although you will learn from playing a scenario you will use different cards each time so it will be a slightly different puzzle each time um, as you can see these are a bit more complicated <laughs> but once you get to scenario 10 oh gosh yeah i kind of half want to read this and half don't but it, this looks this looks quite involved and then Portal Storm, whatever this is. Oh, this is a two to four player game, no designated solo play setup. Okay, so it's just a, a special, special scenario. There you go. Anyway, 10 scenarios included in the base game. That takes you up to here, but then you have expansions. Okay, so this was a Kickstarter game. There were various add-ons, which I don't have. I might have to write to Lucky Duck Games and say, <laughs> Have you got any spare copies? Um, because you've got this one, which is the Gerald versus JT expansion. Then you have this one down here, which is the Spider Goddess expansion. And then you have the Vesnan versus Moloch expansion, uh, which is all of this. So this campaign map is for not just the base game, but for all of the other expansions as well. And not really a spoiler because I did this on the unboxing. 
I have no idea what this guy is, okay? It's one of the bosses. Uh, I'm gonna look forward to painting this miniature. It's, it's pretty huge. Um, and it's basically, yeah, I don't know how this works and I don't know when it comes in, but it looks like it's, you know, it's the size of one of these squares. That's everything. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know in the chat if you've if you've enjoyed it, and as I say, let me know if this is uh, if this is a bit of a surprise to you. Um, you know, I really want to try and allow people to go on the same journey that I did with this game in you know tuning in. Oh, Paul's covering a game. Let's have a look what it is. Oh, this doesn't look like the kind of game I would like. And then as you watch it, you think, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, this is this is more than it appears. Um, didn't win that second scenario, but I am definitely going to have my cake. Uh, yeah, Marcel enjoyed it a lot, and yeah, your copy is is arriving. So um, yeah, I think copies are getting out there in the next few weeks to backers. I think that's the case, and I'm sure it'll be available at retail. I say I'm sure. I'm not 100% sure, so don't don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, hopefully it'll do well. But anyway, I I am done. Uh, for today so thank you very much for watching now as i mentioned at the start in about half an hour's time i think uh, stella and tarrant from meeple university are going to be doing almost exactly the same as what i've done they are doing a two-player playthrough of it where i think you can win a copy of the game as well so make sure you tune in to meeple university if you're interested in watching how the two-player game works um i would have played two or three player today if it weren't for uh, obviously lockdown but lockdown isn't going to be ending anytime soon and I wanted to get this video done uh, ready for the game to be to be released um, so yeah so they're doing a two-player playthrough if you don't get a chance to watch it live then it'll be on their YouTube channel that's Meeple University later on uh, and this is the end of the live streaming for me this is day two of virtual gridcon uh, we're raising money for charity by live streaming I'm going to be back tomorrow morning from nine o'clock uh, the link to the charity is on the page, uh, justgiving.com slash fundraising slash VGC2. So if you, if you are able to donate, even if it's just one or two pounds, uh, please consider doing so because I'm giving you all these videos. I think I'm live streaming for about 36 hours this weekend um, and it's all trying to raise money for charity. So yeah, if you've liked this video, please consider supporting me. Um, well, not supporting me, but supporting the charity. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm waffling. Uh, and Stella's in the chat. So yes, they are just preparing uh, for the setup. If you have any questions, don't ask me because I'm going to be going to bed. Uh, ask Marcel because he knows how to play. Thank you very much, everybody. I will see you tomorrow for more videos. And that's everything. Take care. See you next time. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.